Hey Snapchat, so last night I was watching the uh, Singularity University live stream of the Exponential Manufacturing uh, Conference they're putting on, uh, and Peter Diamandis did his, his usual talk. And I probably read like every book and watched every talk of theirs, um, and a bunch of other people in that space, like Salem Ismail and Yuri Van Geest, and really cool guys like that, um, that have really amazing thoughts in the future. But yeah, I thought like with a bunch of you people now watching this daily, and thank you very much, um, sending me your thoughts about stuff, so it's not just me talking to a camera, um, I figured I'd, I'd discuss the very fundamentals of futurism. So if you go look up some of their talks, they always talk about the exact same things almost. Like they have like their, their phrases and their graphs and things they show. So things like S-curves and exponential thinking and stuff that's just ingrained. And one of the reasons I'm doing this for his daily videos is to kind of introduce people to these topics in a very like um, approachable way. Um, I mean, it's just me rambling about them like from a very low level. Yay! Okay, so let me give you a crash course in exponential thinking, in the convergence of technologies, and in how I predict the future. Let's go. I guess this is the major point that underpins all of futurism and technology and the, the change we're experiencing at the moment, uh, exponential thinking. Humans tend to think in a linear way because we've evolved that way. So there's a small part of our brain called the amygdala, which has evolved over millions of years. Um, and what that basically does is it takes in all the visual and information we're receiving and makes a quick decision whether we're in danger or not. Because we evolved in a world where if the bush has moved, it could be the wind, but it could also be a predator about to eat you. And so we, we, we have to basically make a split second, split, split second reaction and as a result of this evolution, we think very linear, linearly. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but not exponentially, not 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So let's do some graphs. Yay. Awesome. Dem axis. Okay, so the common example is like if you took 30 linear steps, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way up to 30, obviously you get a very straight line, yeah? That's linear thinking. So if you took those same 30 steps in an exponential fashion, what number do you think you get to? So linearly, you get to 30. Exponentially, what do you think you get to? Well, you wouldn't believe it, but actually 30 steps exponentially, you get to a billion. Wow, fucking exponential curves. And this type of exponential change is exactly what information technology is doing right now. It's bootstrapping on itself with every iteration, every new technology, and jumping to the next level, you know, on the shoulders of giants type. So then that brings us to Moore's Law. Uh, Gordon Moore, who started one of the co-founders of Intel um, back in 1965, he wrote a paper where he showed that um, uh, pretty much every year their transistors were doubling on the chip. And that law has held true for over 50 years now um, through different, various different technologies, um, really because they bootstrap on it. I mean, you create a new you know, processor, you use that processor to, to design the next one. But then because computation is embedded into most of our world and most of our daily activities, um, it actually bleeds into other areas. So like storage and solar panels and just so many technologies where information un underpins it. But because we don't think uh, exponentially, we, we really miss these, these technologies as they come up. They, they go through a deceptive phase um, where they, they start off really tiny, but they're actually doubling every year. So the first digital camera was actually invented in Kodak, inside Kodak. And first year it did 0.1 megapixels, then the next year 0.2, then 0.4, and it's still it's doubling. And so on a graph it looks really deceptive because the, the line looks like this. It looks like basically nothing, but then suddenly it just out of nowhere it just goes... And ultimately, that's why Kodak went out of business, because they didn't see the, the benefit, they didn't see the exponential curve. The executives thought, oh, it's, it's like less than zero, like, you know, 0 0.1 megapixels, why work on that, why bother? Oh yeah, so there's also a thing called S-curves. So, so imagine this is like dial-up, and kind of like, it goes great and then peters off, but then something else comes along, you know, DSL, and then like... So each, each individual technology kind of like goes along this massive growth phase and then phases out, but then something else comes along. And so in aggregate, you still get this very, fairly smooth exponential. Ah, crap. Well, I spent way too much time on the first point. Um, so the second point is uh, converging technology, technologies. So we're seeing like AI, biotech, nanotech, 3D printing, uh, all converging. And so while each of those technologies are exponential in their own right, they're actually mixing and merging with each other. So, you know, robotics and AI and biotech are converging together and bootstrapping on each other to create amazing progress. Hey, cool. So once you've got a grasp of exponential technology um, and you track which ones are actually exponential, you can very accurately know that within 5, 10, 15, 20, 50 years, what speed they'll be and what price. So just with Moore's Law, for example, I think the number is around like 2029, a $1,000 CPU will basically be more powerful than all human brains combined. So then anything beyond those, those fundamentals is just wild speculation. But the cool thing with like predicting the future is that provided it doesn't break the laws of physics, it's inevitably likely to happen. So a great way to predict what's coming next is really just to be a generalist. Don't be a specialist too much. Um, just be across all topics. So like, know a little bit of biohacking, know a little bit of robotics, a little bit of AI, a little bit of everything. And then read a lot of news and watch a lot of videos. So I use uh, YouTube subscriptions a lot, uh, Facebook, Reddit, R Futurology is pretty good, um, Feedly, Twitter, um, and Hacker News. 
Awesome, so then once your brain's across everything that's happening, it can kind of just process and make new connections and new ideas. Next step is lateral thinking and positive thinking. So lateral thinking, find a mate that's really into this stuff, get high together and just sit down and then come up with cool ideas and extrapolate on each other's ideas, build upon them. The only rule is that you can't be negative and you can't shut down an idea. So if you find a flaw in what they've said, you can point out the flaw, but then you have to come up with something better to build on it. So you just end up like getting to an epic. So you extrapolate that thought out as far as you possibly can, you know, like a hundred, a thousand years into the future, and then work your way backwards and work out what's the very first step to make that happen if you want to launch a startup off that. The really awesome thing about predicting the future is it's just an imagination game with a little bit of rationale to it. I mean, so long as it doesn't break the laws of physics, anything on a long enough timeline is inevitably going to happen. <laughs> but as a bonus tip, if, you are, if you're talking about someone uh, who doesn't think this way about a future idea, don't give them a timeline. Don't say within three years, within five years, because they'll lose their shit. Just say it without. Anyway, this, <laughs> this video was super long. Establish your thoughts, our future. I'll probably turn this into a smaller little three-minute video at some point in the future and I'll add it to YouTube. See ya.